Yes, I think now we are live. So probably you are able to see me now and I'm able to see you guys. Yes. So somebody was mentioning in the chat, I think Dipanshu was, something is different today. So yes, it's different. Uh, first of all, we have a new camp and we have a board. So you'll be able to see what we're going to teach here. Secondly, Ash not going to be today in the class. She is busy with, busy with something different. So we're going to have that class with Ash day after tomorrow. I hope that is fine with you guys, right? I'm so sorry. I tried streaming, but there was some issue with the cam and I tried to solve it. Uh, now it's solved. So I'm, I'm sorry, Harshit. I think it's late. Uh, yes, Dipanshu is late. <laughs> so I hope it's fine now. Yes, yes. Good evening, everyone. Yes, Harshit is right. So today we're going to study something very important. By the way, before we proceed to the important part, I'm going to ask you guys for two things. First of all, how was your weekend? Because we are studying on Monday. And second thing, um, how is the lockdown treating you guys? So please let me know in the chat. And also last thing, I mean, I shouldn't say that, but you already know that, to leave a like in the stream. We have almost 120, 130 people and we have only um, 19 likes. Ah, it's okay, Arjun. You're doing it. Is the connection fine today? I, I see there's some issue with the connection. We'll, we'll work on the Shivani. We'll work on the sentence structure. We work on everything. Um, today, I'm going to help you with something that's going to help you with the sentence structure with your speaking skills. Uh, we'll see that, okay? Uh, lockdown is just enjoyable with your teaching. Oh, thank you so much, Akshay. All right. Anyone else? All the days are same, Arun said. That's good. That's good. All right, Arshit. I'm excited too. Actually, this is my first time I'm taking these live classes like this. And we have a board to write on. It's going to be fun, I guess. This is like a proper classroom, right? Yeah, okay, good. Um, how many of you know what is collocation? So do you know what is collocation? I'm going to write it here. This is my handwriting, which is the worst in the world, I guess. Can you see it? Collocation? Yes, Fortune 404. Lure means to, um, you know, uh, make someone do something, you know. All right. <clears throat> oh, thank you so much, Dipanshu, for the support. <laughs> yes, what is the meaning of collocation? If anyone knows, please write in the chat, then we're going to start. Yes. Um, Arjun, we already have live cl uh, classes for IELTS already started. You can watch the video and you can um, start in the morning or the evening uh, class. Yes, uh, Vaja uh, Sadan said that uh, it's combined words. Yes, that's true. The words naturally used together. That's fine, Robel. It's very important. I have never seen this thing in our school uh, education. I mean. Nobody told us in school that there's something called collocation. We always used to study about nouns and pronouns and all those simple things. Yes. So this is important combination of words. Somebody said community guidelines. Yes, is the same thing. Um, group of words, digital um, consultant said. By the way, my, is my voice clear? Because the microphone is a little bit far away from me. So probably, um, is it clear, my voice? No. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we get a no first and then a yes. Cool. <laughs> That's good. All right. So collocations are when we come. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, Shivani, if you're preparing for IELTS, uh, we have IELTS classes in the morning and the evening both. Sounds good. Perfect. Clean good. Somebody said that is German. Clean good means sounds good. Okay. Good, good, good. So um, collocation is something when two words combine and generally they come together. Right, they are uh, kind of made for each other words, and there are many types of them. So I'm gonna give you an example. Um, Sagar, my partner is busy with something. My um, live partner, so I have to take all the responsibility and do it myself. I don't know if I can do it uh, same as like we do together, but I'll try my best. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna give you an example so that you understand what collocations are. So you know, it, it gets easy with example. So. Which of these words are correct? Let me know. Okay, I'm going to write something here. So I have written two things here. The first one is fast food and second one is quick food. Which one do you think is correct? Fast food or quick food? 
Yes, yes, Arvind is right. Let's focus on learning. Yes, yeah, Shivani, it is on YouTube. You have to watch our video, the latest video. It's, it's about IELTS. So please go through it, yeah? Oh, nice. Suraj Thakur, your first live class. I'm happy to have you here. Okay, we're getting answered. Ash ma'am is busy, uh, busy uh, Pashna with something else. She'll be coming in the next class, okay? So yeah, we're getting answers. Fast food is correct, but think about it. The synonym of fast is quick. Why not quick food? Right? So this is something which doesn't make any sense, right? Uh, Isha said, this is my first day. Could you please tell me how to give you a classroom online? I'm going, um, okay. Definitely, Isha will we'll work on, I'll uh, help you with the English and you can continue with our English live classes and also you can buy the course if you want, which is in the description. Okay, another example. Another example I'm going to provide you here is um, which of these quick meal or fast meal? Now, which one is correct here? Quick meal or fast meal? Yeah, exactly. Quick food is incorrect here. And among these, can you can you just tell me which one is correct? Quick meal. Now, see, sometimes quick, quick makes sense. Sometimes it doesn't. So the thing is this, when you combine certain words together, this is what we call. Now, fast meal is incorrect. There's nothing like fast meal. So all you have to do is understand which words go together. Okay, I'm gonna give you another example so that we can proceed. Yeah, okay. Then we're gonna discuss about the types, okay? There's something called uh, pressure level and pressure height. Which one is correct, do you think? Pressure level or pressure height? Pressure level, right? Exactly. So these words are always together to make sense. You cannot use synonyms in certain situations. Right. Making sense together to you guys, I hope. Right. So what we have to do is understand which of these words come together and what are these types. Okay. Types as in there are six total types. We're going to see each of them with examples. If you have any doubts, please ask in the chat. I'm going to answer them. And remember, I'm alone here, so <laughs> I, I hope I have your mercy. You know, I cannot make it the perfect one, so I'll try my best, okay? All right, then. Uh, we're going to start with the first one, which is adjective and nouns. Right. Adjective plus nouns. Can you give me an example when you're using adjective plus nouns together? A uh, quick meal means, uh, Divya, by the way, uh, is when you eat something really quick. So let's say I was getting late for my work. I had a quick meal with my friend. That means you ate something really quick. Oh, Rishika, thank you so much for that com uh, compliment. All right. Um, uh, Vishuddha, this class is not for IELTS, but it can help in IELTS because IELTS is all about English. In, in, in a way, right? IELTS classes generally morning and evening. Please uh, watch our video, the latest video. Thank you so much, Community Guidelines. Yes. Somebody is giving an example. The doctor ordered him to take regular exercise. Mm -hmm. Where is ma'am, sir? Uh, Robin, ma'am is busy with something important, so I have to take it. Yeah, we, have, we are getting answer here. Huge building. So here we're getting examples. Huge building. Huge building is an example of using adjective and a noun, right? Uh, thank you guys for those nice compliments. I'm really happy. I guess my confidence is increasing with every day. Yes. And you guys are giving examples now. Smart girl. That's what you've written, right? Nice place. So here we have adjectives plus nouns together. Delicious food, right? Uh, each of the proper timing for IELTS, you have to write us a mail. That, that's what I said. I'm going to provide you a link in the description using which you can go through IELTS. Uh, please don't worry about that. Yeah, brilliant girl, Vishuddha. Maybe you're writing about yourself. So <laughs> that's another example of adjective and nouns. Right? Yeah, perfect, perfect. 
So this is what we call adjective plus noun. I'll give you another example. Um, red chair, right? Red marker, maybe. So this makes sense. Peaceful Indian, I didn't get any message from you. Can you please write it again? Yes. Good food, Wonder Woman. <laughs> I think Wonder Woman is a single word. Is this you have separated it? Uh, handsome Sam. Oh, thank you so much. But maybe as an example, you are ugly teacher. Okay. Thank you. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> okay. We're going to proceed then. Short guy, white board. Yeah. Kind girl. Exactly. Exactly. These are the examples of adjectives and nouns. So we're going to write this somewhere else. So A plus N, we're going to write it here in the corner, A plus N. And I'm going to ask you, what is this later? Okay. Yes. Um, thank you so much for these, these praises, by the way, guys. Uh, another one is when we use noun plus noun together. Can you give an example when we have nouns and noun together? Noun and noun together, they always come together. I already gave you one example. Can you give another example? The example I gave you is, by the way, excruciating life is an example of the previous one, Swati, if I'm not wrong. Chair car, mm, maybe, but chair car doesn't make any sense, right? Adorable baby is adjective plus. Uh, Taj Mahal is a single proper noun. I'm asking about, about two nouns. By the way, this is separate. Don't go here. This is separate. Yes. Perfect. I got a nice one from Swati. Love life. So these are two nouns and we combine them and we form another thing which we can understand together. Spider-Man, Iron Man, we're getting good. Tree house. Nice one. Tree house. Guys, you're smart, really smart. Yeah, Taj Mahal is in Agra. I know that. I live there. I mean, <laughs> I was born there. I don't live there. Ruchika. Uh, the Taj Mahal is, is a proper noun. Uh, live heaven. Live becomes, um, uh, in, in this case, it becomes an adjective. Yeah, that's a nice one. Chocolate shake. So, chocolate and shake. Another example which I gave you initially was pressure and level. Yeah, grape juice. Exactly. Paper cup or paper cut. All these things are called noun plus noun collocation. I hope it is clear for you. Poor and rich is something different, which we cannot. <laughs> I love Jason's message, alu parata. That's a nice one. It's a tasty example, right? Okay, good. So let me just erase it here. And we go, we're go. we going to write it here. N plus N. N plus N. Okay, that's this right here. Another example of collocation or type of collocation when we have verb plus noun. Bus stop. I, I like this one, Nikhil. Actually, Nikhil is right. Bus stop. Ice cream. Ice cream actually is written with an high with a hyphen, so it's not correct in a way. Um, oh, I'm happy as well, uh, Vishuddha. If you're enjoying the class, I'm really enjoying it as well. Teaching you in this way. What is war plus noun? Can you give an example? Pani Puri is correct for noun and noun. Okay, <laughs> yes, running man. That's correct. Running man but remember in this case running is an adjective so this cannot be taken as an example or maybe it can actually haircut is not true uh yeah because actually you're right it cannot be taken because running is a noun in this case like for example book reading is not considered a verb so we cannot take this i guess any example you have mm -hmm. yeah take a risk yeah Cutting cake or okay, cake cutting itself becomes an activity, so we cannot take it together. Uh, sleeping sheep can be one. Dancing girl, okay, good. Flowing river could be one taken. Flowing river. Or oh, I saw a river flowing. So you can write not like this exactly. So you say, I saw a river flowing. You cannot say, I saw a river running because it doesn't make any sense, right? So this is what we say exactly. So uh, take action, also nice one. This, this is a nice one from, uh, I think it's uh, Malati. Take action, good one. So this is take means a verb, action is a, is a noun. That's a nice one, right? 
Okay, stop watch. Now, stop watch together are not considered correct because they, this is just the one word, so we cannot take keep it as uh, crying baby. Yeah, that that all save time. Yes, please save time. It's important. So save time together becomes verb plus noun. So I'm gonna write it here. V plus N. Another one, right? Okay. Right. <clears throat> Do you know what are adverbs? I'm going to ask you this question because I need to explain you what is the next type. So what is an adverb? Anyone? A workbook actually is an example. Uh, Sujata is for noun plus noun. So this one. Noun plus noun is a nice example for workbook. And generally, they're together. That is work plus book. It's a single word. So you cannot separate them probably, right? That's what I feel. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Somebody, trend, said I said that adjective of a verb is called adverb. Um, in a way, but that's not the right definition. But you're on the right track. Okay. Exactly. We have Irfan. Uh, Irfan said, which describes the verb is called an adverb. So let's say an example. Any example of adverb? Uh, is my voice clear? Because some of some of, some of you can't hear me. You're writing in the comment. Yes, money. Uh, I think this Nedri. That's correct. It always tells you about the verb. So let me write here. Walk or walking. Let's say I am walking. Right. You can leave the sentence exactly the way it is. I am walking. But if I want to emphasize how am I walking, then I'm going to add something here. I can write quickly. I can write hastily. Whatever you want to write. Yes. So you can say here quickly. Right? Or I am writing horribly. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's a nice one. Uh, Sam, your handwriting has improved drastically. So this is something which you can think drastically. Generally, they end in LY. I'm saying generally, not always. So sometimes they don't. But you keep it as a thumb rule. If it's ending in LY, it's an adverb, right? Yes. Yeah, Naveen is funny. Always <laughs> extremely funny. OK. So this is an adverb. Now already you know this. So another type which we have is verb plus adverb. So what is the meaning of this verb plus adverb? You use it together. Yes, I am eating quickly. Tell uh, about its difference between a uh, gerund. is when you form it as a noun. Yeah, so ing is added to form a noun from a verb that is called a gerund. But verb, those words cannot function as a verb then. I hope you understand what is gerund then. Um, thank you so much, Upashna, if I'm looking classy. Although I don't um, know what class is in this sense is. OK, uh, we have talking sweetly, uh, walking properly. I'm getting nice messages. I'm reading slowly. Yes, dancing gracefully is one of my favorite because that gracefully word is really graceful. So Karan is uh, Karan gave a nice example, uh, dancing gracefully. Love effortlessly. Nice, Neha. Yeah. Uh, walking properly is correct. Walk slowly. So all these words are verb plus adverb. I'm going. We're going to write it here. Verb plus adverb. Okay, good. Now some of you said adjective is sorry adverb is one emphasizes the verb, right? That that you agreed with. So tell me one thing. What is an adjective then? What is an adjective? Yeah, talking nicely, somebody saying, I think that has uh, Sina Khatun. Um, Sanya says, drawing nicely. Yeah, that's nice one. My birthday, June 30. Oh, it's coming soon, by the way, at three. So we're going to celebrate together here on live. Perfect. Yes, source quality, describe a noun, quality, quality, perfect. Uh, flatly refused, uh, that's a nice one. Watching movie, uh-huh. You look tall. Arvin, I'm not that tall, honestly. But <laughs> I'm an average heighted person. OK. Uh, adjective always describe a noun. But I mean, before we proceed to but question, we're going to answer here. Noun plus adjective. This is the most common one, I think. Have we described this one? No. 
Oh, we did already, I think. We did already, right? So we have adverb an adjective. So there's an adverb adjective, right? And adjective always is used to emphasize nouns. Right. Adverb is used to emphasize verbs. But do you know that that adjectives can also be used to emphasize adverbs? I'm, I'm sorry uh, if my handwriting is not clear. Can you can you see it? Can you read it? What I'm writing here? Is it clear here? Arishika says totally unbelievable. It is believable. <laughs> okay. So here it's noun and verb, but together they also emphasize each other. That means adjective can also emphasize adverb. Can you give me an example? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. If it is clear, I'll try to write it properly. You know, sometimes it is really horrible. Okay. Let me give an example of what do I mean by adjective can emphasize verb. Okay. So we have a word called drastically improved Do you see that drastically improved is a word significant significantly enhanced do you know these words drastically improved significantly enhanced have you heard of these words totally unbelievable nice one Rishika <laughs> yes, that's a nice example and also, uh, you know, talks about the uh, current topic, seriously injured, exactly. So tell me one thing, guys, when I told you what an adjective and adverb can do together, were you using these things in your everyday speech? Yes. Were you using these words? Yeah, you might have heard this or uh, seen this in uh, newspapers. You knew them, right? So are you using them every day in your everyday speech? Yeah, vaguely familiar. Yes. Yes, somebody saying yes, we are using. No. <laughs> I used said no, Swati said no. Nine, the was saying in German. Yes, I see that you want to learn German. Exactly. That's what the problem is. You know, we know something, but we never use it. The problem is nobody uses around us. Right. I significantly, significantly improve my grammar. Yes. Instead of saying I improve my grammar, you can add significantly to show. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. So please start using these things, which is uh, really good and make your language uh, sound like different than compared with us. Right. So please do that. We're going to see more. Don't worry about that. So these are the example of adverbs and adjectives. Uh, uh, is it clear to you guys? <laughs> Once in a blue moon. That's nice one, uh, Natri. Yes, these words are used in scientific researches, but nobody is stopping you from using words like drastically or significantly or morbidly or whatever, <laughs> or blissfully, unaware, yes. People use it, you know, native speakers do use it. We just, we are a little bit scared to use them because we think that, oh, this is going to go wrong and uh, we might mess up. So that's the problem, right? Yes, good. So um, we have already how many types? Six, I think five types already here. Let me just see. Eight plus eight. Finally, we have something called prepositional phrases. Prepositional and phrases. By the way, do you know what is a preposition? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you so much, Nikhil, if you're enjoying this. Um, okay. Uh, just give me a second, guys. I think there's some news is going on. Uh, we have... All right. Done. Solved. All right. Preposi yeah, it shows the position or location of a word. Exactly. Yes. Um, yes, Sanya, now you got the answer from people. We have preposition when it's showing position or location of something. Yes. So that is 
a preposition and then we use it for a phrase. So there, that is what we form preposition of phrases. Peaceful Indian, somebody's mad at peaceful Indian, don't worry, something happened. Okay. Okay, so let me just show you an example and you can tell me what is, what is the meaning of these things. In time, on time, and at time, or times, at times. You see, there's a little bit change and we're using just a single difference. Can you just tell me what's the difference between these three? In time, on time, and at time. <laughs> peaceful Indian, come on, let's focus here. You are peaceful, so let's say peaceful, yeah? We're gonna work here. Yes, that's true. You should be on time for tomorrow's interview. On time means exact time. Somebody said on time means exact time. Um, that's incorrect. Okay. In time, that is within fixed time. That's correct. That's correct, Malati. In time means um, uh, that is when you have a set time or within the boundary, let's say. When you are at a place within the boundary, that within the limit, for example, I was supposed to be in a meeting between seven to 10, right? So I was in time. That was, I reached in time, in that time constraint. At time is exact, exactly, Vishuddha is correct. This is an exact number. I mean, with time. So we have exact time, for example, at five o'clock, at six o'clock. Um, so I start uh, the live class at, Four o'clock. That means at exactly one time. That's what I mean. At time, right? Yes, exactly. At times is something different. That is right. Naveen, at times means um, not frequently, like you said. That's correct. Right? <sighs> Netri is using, I use these uh, idioms. <laughs> okay, your friends now. That's perfect. Okay, okay, okay. On time is actually, it has nothing to do with time, honestly. It has to do with punctuality. Somebody who is punctual, that is, see, missing here. Punctual means a person who reaches on time. Um, Tejasri, I'm sorry if I'm not able to ma make you understand a few things. I am trying my best. <laughs> okay, so punctual means on time. That is uh, when you, it's not nothing about time. It's about um, punctuality. Okay. Yeah, exactly. The train was on time. That is punctual. Yes. Like me, I'm punctual. Yes, Naveen, you are punctual. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you, Anjali. So we have to understand what are these things now. So finally, prepositional phrases. These are the six things. Can you please elaborate one by one? When I reach, when I take my marker, where can you just tell me the full form of these? A plus N. What is the first one? Can you just write in the chat? Yeah, I woke up at uh, 9 o'clock. I wake up at 9 o'clock. At is the exact time, right? What is the first one? You're talking about this one now. Adjective plus noun. Perfect. Second one. No, that's not adverb. It's adjective plus noun. Second one. Mm -hmm. Noun plus noun, exactly. There's a noun plus noun. Third one is verb plus noun. Okay, good. Then we have verb plus. Next one is. What is this one? Next one is verb plus adverb, if I'm not wrong, right? No, it's not verb plus adjective, it's verb plus adverb. Right, not verb plus adjective. Verb is not connected with adjective, it's adverb. Then this one, yes, verb plus adverb, like you said. This one is adverb plus adjective. Yes, and finally, what do we have here? 
What's the last one? Can you just let the last one P is prepositional phrases. Is it clear now? I mean, you right now you are sitting here. You learn something which is new for sure. Collocations you might be knowing, but their types now I think they are fine with you. Prep they are not prepositions. They are prepositional phrases. They are phrases together. They come like on time, in time, at time, or in danger. Right at the moment, you might have heard of these phrases. Okay, these things you can learn in detail. There are many books for that. Uh, my favorite is from Oxford and Cambridge. They say uh, collocation in use. The name of the book is collocation. In use, right? This is something uh, I'm going to provide you a link in the description uh, later. You can download. The, uh, I mean, sorry, you can buy the book from on. I mean, from Amazon and stuff. This is the book which is the best book. Some people say that learning collocation changed their life because they could use the exact phrases which are required while speaking. <laughs> yes, because this is the reminiscence of the school time, and I think I'm really happy to. Um, help you with this thing, you know. It, it makes me feel like I'm a school teacher right now, but it's fun in a way. Yeah, exactly. This, that's why it's interesting. We know them. Sometimes we we forget them, or let's say we tend not to use them in our conversation. That's what we need, right? So I I have a question now to ask. Um, conditional today. Sure. So we can uh, we can also understand what are these complex and compound sentences. <laughs> Thank you so much, Irfan. If if the person looked nice. Okay. Um, so two questions. First of all. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Vishuddha, I was about to ask you this thing. Uh, two questions were. First question is: Do you want the live classes to be like this, or do you want the live classes to be us sitting on the sofa or chair and teaching you guys? So we have choice one, live classes like this, when we have a board and we write and we talk. Um, yeah, definitely, Dipansu will play some games later. And second choice is that we can sit on the sofa and study. Which one do you want? Yeah, I know Netri. I think I know your name already. Both are good. This one, both. Yeah, we can keep changing, right? OK, we can keep changing. That's fine then. Like this, like this, we are getting answers now. Okay. Choice one, of course. Now we said, of course, choice one. <laughs> Don't worry, next time Ash will be here. She will be glad to you know, teach this way. She's going to have fun. Um, ah, we are missing our principal, ma'am, Ash. Good, good. I'm going to let her know that you said that. <laughs> okay. Second question is, uh, do you want to understand what is the difference between simple, complex, and compound sentences? If you don't know, of course. My head is a mess, honestly, but thank you so much, Peaceful Indian. It's a mess right now. Anyway, um, do you want to uh, understand what collocations are done so we can erase them quickly? All right, so we have something called, yes, complex. So I'm right here. Simple, complex, and compound sentences. I think you have heard these things. Somebody said, no, I don't want to learn. I, okay, of course we won't. If you, maybe we know we can, we can study this later after a game time. We can have a, a fun time, right? You're right, actually, I should have some water. I'll have some water, that's right. Thank you. She's well, it's just, she's working on something for you guys, of course. So, uh, it's fine. <laughs> Naveen says, I have some knowledge about these things. Uh, maybe, you know, we can uh, we can talk about these. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, she's not here. She, she'll have the next class, maybe. Uh, yeah, Nana, there's no juice today. So, water is not what we have to live with, you know. Um, not really. <laughs> Peaceful in I used to love, well, you know, going to gym, but not now. I don't get time. I have to start again, you know. Okay, good. So we can have some games and then we can go for these things, right? I think as I'm sleeping, the pastor said that. Okay, funny. All right. 
So I want you to write something interesting or funny from the two words I'm going to provide you. This is called word game, but this time we have a twist. You have to write something funny. You have to, you know, there's no going out. So you have to think your funny brain out, okay? Yes, game time. <laughs> yeah, Rebel, I'm sorry. She'll be definitely here in the next class. I, I promise on that, you know? Okay, so we have words such as class and true. These are the two words and you have to form funny sentences. You have to make your class laugh. Okay, so we have a uh, class and true. So please go ahead, make a sentence. <laughs> uh, it's okay if you're late, Mangala, that's fine with me because we are still learning. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ash is dreaming right now because said that. Okay, it's all right. Somebody said Rahul Dravid is a true class player. Can be said that. Okay. The class is true. It is true. We are not, we are not attended in class ever. Anjali, that's a little bit incorrect here and there. You should say it is not, it is true that we have not attended the class. Or we have not ever. You can say that. <laughs> class is boring. Is it true? That's a good one, right? I like that one, Maitri. Uh, fun time, yes. My math classes are boring and that's true. Nice one, Rajan. That's a good one. You, you thought about it, you know, you put your brain in there. Okay, next one. It's true that we were sleeping in the class. That's a good one. Very uh, thoughtful. Uh, where's my cutie ma'am? Uh, cutie mom is not here, Monica. She will be joining you day after tomorrow in the next class. This teacher is true, but where is the class word, Gina? We need the word class. Um, thank you so much, Prajwal. If you think this way, I'm happy to hear that. It is true, your class session is fantastic. Sahil, thank you so much. And the sentence is also correct. Good. So we're going to have next one. Uh, smart. And we have um, glass. Smart and glass. These are the two words you have to use. Your class, your class is awesome and that's true. Thank you so much, Rajan, if you think this way and also the sentence is correct. Perfect. Um, yes, our class will be at 9 a.m. Is it true? Yes, a good sentence. Perfect. The video, um, Desi Gamer, is about two things. First of all, we discuss um, the collocation, right? How do we combine two words? And second thing we're going to understand is simple, complex, and compound sentences, which will be after these two words, thing, right? You're looking smart in glasses. Those are glasses. This is glass. This is different. Smart and glass. Yes, these are glasses, not glass. Do you think the glass is a smart? Mm, okay. If you wear glasses, that's a thing. Okay. I think you're using coffee glass. That's a that's a good one. Smart looks smart. Uh, Sam looks smart with a coffee glass. That's that makes sense together. <laughs> as we're using smart class also makes sense but glasses is the word for that <laughs> smart that's it now thank you Taimur Khan that's amazing all right then I think we can go back to our grammar because it, it is fun but it's not that much fun with uh, without your like you said cutie ma'am ash ma'am so we're gonna have a lot of uh, funny activities with her now right now we are having uh, grammar class so let me ask you um Something is here. I'm looking smart while drinking a glass of beer. This is the best so far. That's amazing. But don't drink, okay? <laughs> Not right now. Okay, we have now simple, complex, and finally compound. My P is messed up down there. Okay. Now it's perfect. I think I, I kept it perfect. Um, peaceful Indian, the reason is because we don't want to think about the colors, you know, sometimes red, sometimes blue and whatever. So we chose one color and we kept, you know, keep going because blue, uh, black uh, goes with everything. So black is the new perfect. I feel that. Perfect. The guy holding glass acts smart, maybe to be smart, but it isn't right. That's good one. Rishika. 
Okay, glass of vodka, current perfect one. It's typically to learn. Yeah, it's typical actually, Mama Sef. It is typical, but it is the way, best way. I, I feel that. So what's the difference between simple, complex, and compound? Any one of you, if they know, please write in the chat. Yeah, peaceful Indian. It is a nice color, I would say. <laughs> Fun studio, the live classes always uh, start as four o'clock, four to five, and alternate days, that is Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, we have videos. Okay, peaceful Indian knows about this, right? Perfect. Compound fanboys, maybe that's correct. Anjali, that's correct. Compound fanboys, perfect. Um, so I'm gonna just simple as a short sentence. Uh, I mean, it has nothing to do with the length. Vishuddha is just you need to have in a simple sentence a single walk and a single subject, and it should make sense, right? Uh, yes, Neeraj, I'll, I'll provide a link in the description using which you can register for IELTS classes. Those are almost free. Don't worry about them as well. So simple sentence is when subject plus verb. You don't need an object. Okay. Subject and verb together, are form, they form together in a meaningful way. Right? Thank you so much, uh, Taimul Khan. Uh, subject and verb and meaningful way is called a simple sentence. Remember, subject and verb together also form a clause, but clause not necessarily make a sense, right? But a sentence which is simple always makes sense and has subject and verb minimum. It can have an object, right? I am teaching. Here I am the subject. Am teaching is the verb, so it makes sense as well. This is a sentence, simple sentence, right? Um, Nero, it's it's not set payment. You can pay whatever you want. There's no uh, set payment. It's nothing like minimum. You can pay any amount you want. Okay, for IELTS. Yes. Sam smile exactly. So that is a simple sentence that makes sense together. That's that's a good one, right? Um, Zina, there might be some issue. Uh, please write on our email. Uh, on our email, you know the learn with Simon. I said that at gmail.com. We'll definitely solve it. Okay. She is sleeping. It is free as well. Yes, kind of. I mean, you pay whatever you want. It's up to you. We are not asking for any set amount. Okay. Yes, exactly. So I'm going to explain this one here. So they say, like somebody said, she is eating is an example of simple sentence. Then we have, or she's playing complex sentence. Complex sentence is when you have one dependent and another independent sentence in there okay complex sentence is when we have a dependent and independent sentence both so we have to have two uh, parts here so let me explain it here if uh not if although i am late I mean, comma will come here, and then you write something else. So here we have a sentence for complex one. Although I am late, making sense, not making sense by itself, because it is it requires you know other part to finish. Although I am late, I'll take the class. Here we can say, I will take the class or I'll conduct the class. So this is this sentence is making sense by itself. I will take the class. Right. This sentence is not making sense by itself. This is called a dependent sentence. Oh, sorry. This is a dependent sentence and this one is independent. So when you combine both of them together, it becomes a complex sentence. Although I'm late, I will do my work on time. Exactly, Rajan, that's correct. I will do my work on time, make sense together. I mean, without anything, but although I'm late, doesn't make any sense. Okay? Yeah, so we can this totally different. We are understanding some grammar rules. Grammar rules are supposed to be taught on a board, maybe. Although it rains, I'll go to the market. The Although it is raining or it is pouring, you can say that way. Um, so this, uh, Ash is working on something. She'll be coming in the next class. Don't worry about that. Yeah. 
The next one is when we have compound sentence. Just give me a second. All right, so we have compound sentence. Compound sentence is when we have a sentence, I mean, two parts which are both independent, right? I am leaving now, but I will come later. Now, if you look at this thing, these things, right? I am leaving now, making sense completely, okay? But I will come later, so there's an R, R missing, also making sense. That means these are independent sentences, but together they form something new that is different. So we have, um, Lakesh, I am sorry if I didn't see your question. I didn't see your question, I'm sorry. I think I have to... <laughs> I mean, you know what? I, I can do one thing. I can uh, do one thing. If, if I, you allow me, after this thing, we can have a short introduction of German language, a tiny one, like five minutes. How many of you are going to stay here if I uh, teach five minutes German? You'll be able to say your name in German, where you live, and your age. So we can... I just need some agreements and disagreements to know if we are. Yes, exactly. We have uh, sentences here. I want some. <laughs> okay, me, me, good, done. German, German time after this. That's fine. That's fine with me. Yeah, me. Yes, perfect, perfect. Okay, I'm here. Uh, so, okay, we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll do that. Somebody give nice examples as well. That is, uh, they form one part and another part and they are not related to each other, but together they make sense. So they are not dependent on each other. This is called compound sentence. That's it. There's nothing else to learn. Yes, we're getting, I will be here. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> Akriti says, oh, okay, I am ready. It seemed interesting, right? We gonna understand some German. You will be able to, you know, show off in front of your friends that I know some German, right? Okay. Okay, good, good, good. So let's start then. By the way, from now, if somebody asks you what are you learning, don't say German. Okay, so we're going to start now. German is called Deutsch. German is called Deutsch in German. So, for example, India is also called Bharat or Hindustan in Hindi. Same way, German is called Deutsch. Yeah. So, you're learning Deutsch, right? And German, if you add here the word language, you're learning German language. In a way, you're learning Deutsch. Sprache. Uh, somebody saying bye. <laughs> Online class is just going for five minutes to. Uh... Oh no, I cannot say that. Come on, peaceful Indian. Let's forget about that chapter about Hitler, right? It's hello. Yes. Complex and compound sentences. Please explain. Rajan, we did that. Complex and com complex sentence has one dependent part and one independent part. However, compound sentence has both independent parts. So in a way, none of the sentence, if we remove one part, both of them will make sense. Svenska. Svenska is uh, Swedish, I think. Okay. Difficult to pronounce exactly Deutsch. Deutsch, Sprache, that is German language. Okay. Yes, exactly. We don't pronounce T. This one we say Deutsch. Sh sound. It's been good. That means I'm good. Okay. So we're learning Deutsch Sprache. You might be knowing some of the words already in German, right? <laughs> you might be knowing this one. Das. Do you know this word? It's some of the brand's tagline. 
Oh, you speak a little bit Swedish. Swedish is really sweet. I like it. So you might have heard this as a tagline of a brand that is Volkswagen. Yes, Volkswagen. It used to be Volkswagen, but now it's Volkswagen. That is what German is. Fox means people, wagon means car. The people's vehicle, the car. That is Volkswagen Das Auto. <laughs> okay, okay, perfect. I'm gonna teach you how to say your name in German and your age and where you live, right? I'm gonna write here English and then German. Yes, Volkswagen is a huge brand. My name is Sam. This is English, right? You can say the sentence in many ways in German. The first way is mine. I think the marker is not working. So mine name is Sam. This is the first way, the simplest way you can learn. Um, yes, mother of God. My name is Sam is the simplest way to understand the sentence. My name is Sam. Okay. Another way to say, and by the way, all the nouns in German are capitalized. If you see N is capitalized here, it's always capitalized. Second one. <clears throat> ich heise Sam. So this is something new for you. It's like a beta. My name is Sanya, somebody said. Perfect. My name is Himanshi. My name is Ninja. That's correct. Nama and N capital. Don't forget that. Okay, this is important. This is a new language. Follow its rules. Ish heise Sam. This is something they, we don't use it. My name is Naveen. That's perfect. So this can be translated as I am called Sam. Ish heise so this is a B, this is beta. You know, this, the beta you might have seen in mathematics, beta. And it's, it is pronounced as double S, okay? Is Heiser Sam. Or the last one, which is the most easiest one, Ich bin Sam. I am Sam. So we have three different ways to say your name. My name is Sam, is Heiser Sam, and finally, is Bin Sam, that is I am Sam. Is Bin Sakshi, like you said, is Bin Bumi, perfect, perfect, good. This is something which you understand about name. So first one is simple, you can use it, my name is Sam, or your my, my name is Nana, my name is Naveen, whatever you want to say, you can say, okay? I hope it is clear, we can proceed to the next one about the age. All right. The next one is about the age, actually, right? <laughs> it's a bit difficult, that's right, but it's fun in a way, you know, but funny pronunciation, exactly. If I show you some word, you're going to be like, what is this? I cannot pronounce this, okay? All right, next one is I am, let's write here 50 years, or well, let's say 50 um, seven years old. Okay, let's write it here. 57 years old. You can write in English this one. Yes, exactly. Somebody said already. Srishti knows. Ish being 57 for you can keep 57, but if you want to know the pronunciation perfect one, that is Sieben und Fünfzig. I'm going to write in German. Forget it. Right? I'll write it here. The German part of this. Ish bin sieben und fünf sis Jahre alt. <laughs> yes, you can say directly Ish bin Swansis, like you said, it's been 20. But this one is a little bit different and difficult, so we're going to break it and understand. Yeah? Ich bin sieben und fünfzig. So there are two words. Sieben und fünfzig. Three words. Jahre alt is years old. 
Rishika, I know it's going over your head, but please try to remember these were exactly, this one is ears, and this one is old, and this one is I, and this one is M. So I hope it is clear now. This one is 7 and 50, that is 57. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay for now. Yeah, that's true. You should respect every language, not just German. That's what I learned when I was learning a new language. Okay, last sentence. I think most of the students asked me on the day one how to say I like you and I love you in German. So I'm going to teach you how to say I like you and I love you in German. Okay? Right. Um, yes, so we're going to say, I love you in German, easy way, ich, I love you, and in German it's called, ich liebe dich, this is the simple one, ich liebe dich, is German for I love you, if you want to say, I like you, ich mag dich. This is I like and you. Liebe, not labor. Labor means to live. So L E B E, labor equal to live. L I E B E equal to love. So these are two different things, okay? <laughs> love Guru Sam, no, not really. Yes. So is Liebe dish? And ich mag this are the two things. But if you, uh, I'm sorry if it's buffering, I'm trying to solve it. Now, finally, uh, the one is I hate you. That is I, that's right here, I hate you is ich hasse dish. Is hasse dish, I hate you. Yes, that's correct. Srishti is definitely learning, you know, German from for a long time. So it's hard. So this is correct. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, can I ask you a few things if I can? I think I can. Because this is something new for you. I can ask a single word. So can you just write in the chat right now how to say um, in German, my name is XYZ. Let's say my name is Sam. Can you write in German quickly? Yes, Rishi is really good at it. That's true. <laughs> Srishti, yeah. Srishti. Okay, maybe some mistake we made. There are two. There's Srishti and there's Srishti. There are two, I guess. So people are confused. Is Gain a Hauser? Yeah, and our house is correct. Okay, my name is Trisha. That's a good one. Okay, forgot. <laughs> it's okay if you forgot. My name is XYZ, whatever it was. It was just for fun, guys. You, it's just for you to see how new languages sound. And uh, because you're already learning English, you know, maybe it is said that if you learn two languages together, you can compare and learn quickly. So just for you. Yeah, somebody asking, my name is uh, Rajita, my name is Meena, my name is Sadhana. We have Himanshu, Himanshi, Vishuddha, perfect. Naveen, my name is Naveen. Yes, good. What is the word for I in German? Can anyone remember? What is the word for I? This is the last question I'm going to ask about German. Then German is over for us here. <laughs> yes, Lavanya, that's correct. German is really difficult from now because you have no idea about it. Oh, that's good. Fun studio if you're learning Russian. Yes. Ish, perfect. Mine is my, so answer is ish. Perfect, good one. Okay. All right, so um, thank you for being in the class. It was fun with you guys today. I hope I could help in some way and you could learn something new and maybe maybe you learn something about German as well. Maybe one word or two. Um, myself is something different in German. Uh, Somebody is asking Sobi. I think it's Mesh. Yeah? All right. Um, my name is mine. All right, then, uh, guys, I'll see you. Um,
somebody is asking some question let me just read here okay bhumi please write us a mail if you have any other question please write us a mail we'll re reply on that yes yeah, not that difficult well you can definitely learn it i'm not saying it's that difficult uh well rajan i have to end the class because of two reasons i have i an ielts class and secondly um i have to go because i have to have something to drink right <laughs> uh, thank you so much arjun if you find it interesting we'll meet definitely next time okay thank you so much if you say hd british as uh, sir like is i think all right then i'll see you tomorrow then i'm in the after tomorrow in live class yeah have a nice time goodbye